guys welcome back to my channel so I'm just kind of mentally preparing over here for all of the hate I'm gonna receive for this video but I'm gonna jump right in so in today's video I want to talk about basically if your animals like you and if they like interacting with your other pets and I'm gonna be taking Bowie out today because Bowie was not present in the last video because Bowie unfortunately was shedding and now she finally shed and she looks glorious so she will be the star of today's video so to kick off this entire video I want to talk about the word anthropomorphism so you may not have heard of that word before or you may not be sure of what it means exactly so we're gonna cover that Anthropomorphism is basically when people put their own human-like qualities onto their animals. Usually those human-like qualities are feelings and emotions. So an example of anthropomorphism would be saying that your reptile is excited to see you when you come home. So that's anthropomorphism because you are putting a feeling onto your animal that you aren't really sure if they're capable of having. So a lot of times people will mistake their behaviors of their animals as feelings or emotions. Bowie, where are you going? Bowie's getting so big that she just like escapes and I don't even know what she's doing anymore. So again, um, if your animal seems excited to see you when you get home, you may think that that's a form of love and they're so excited to see you. But normally what it actually means is that obviously your animal's used to you, they see you as a food source, and they're most likely just coming out and making their presence aware because they want food. Bowie, what are you doing? So that's just one example of anthropomorphism. So it's really hard to talk about whether or not your animal really loves you or likes you because again, we aren't sure that reptiles have those feelings and emotions and those are very human-like qualities, which is what the word anthropomorphism is. So what I want to say, what my opinion is on this entire subject is that reptiles tolerate human interaction. And that sounds really cold and not very loving, obviously, but that's pretty much what it is because reptiles just rely on instincts and they're trying to survive. So some reptiles will tolerate handling better than others and people will think that, oh, that means my animal loves me, they love being handled. Like Bowie here does amazing with handling. She's really great. She loves to come out. See, I'm anthropomorphizing right now because I literally just said she loves to come out. Um, she doesn't have those feelings and emotions. We're all guilty of doing this. I'm not perfect. I do it all the time with my animals as well. The truth of the situation is that she comes out and she does get a little bit of exercise from this and it also can be a form of enrichment. She's getting new smells, new feels for things. Um, but it also can be a little stressful for animals. So she doesn't seem very stressed whatsoever. So she tolerates handling a lot better than maybe some other reptiles. That doesn't mean that she's just more loving or happy. It just means that she just tolerates handling better than others. So I'm sad to say that I think that our reptiles just tolerate us. Um, they don't really have a strong bond or connection with us. They don't feel the love for us that we feel for them because they do not have those human-like qualities. And for us to put that on our animals is anthropomorphism. So the next thing that I want to talk about is do your reptiles enjoy the interaction with your other pets and animals that you may be keeping? And this goes for other reptiles or maybe even mammals that you're keeping. So I'm gonna start off talking about the interaction between reptiles and mammals because I think it's the most important. Um, I see a lot of the time people will put their reptiles on their dog or their cat and they think that they're cuddling and they like each other and they're friends. Again, that's just completely anthropomorphizing the situation. And in my own personal opinion, I think that it's a risk and it's not something that I would ever do with my dog or reptiles. So I just got Chacho, my new dog. He is a small breed and initially I was a little bit worried because obviously I'm keeping snakes. Um, my boa constrictor is still a juvenile but he will get much larger. So I've made the personal choice to absolutely never have my dog interact with my snakes because no matter what it's just a risk. Um, people that do that with their bearded dragons and their dogs. Um, it really just depends on the situation. I think there's always a risk there. Um, a bearded dragon may just sit with your dog and they'll be fine with that, but maybe something can spook your bearded dragon and it will start to run away. 
and that can, depending on what type of breed of dog you're keeping, instinctually, if they see something running, they may feel the need to go and chase that lizard. And that could result in your lizard being harmed, so it's just always a risk. Animals are relying on instincts, um, so it's just very important to realize that they do not have the human qualities that we have because they are not humans. Reptiles are very solitary animals. They do not just want to cuddle up with another predator because again, like a dog or a cat, those are predators to reptiles. Um, they may be more used to them in captivity. They see them all the time. They may not see them as a threat, but again, there is always a potential danger risk. So it's just something that I personally choose to not ever introduce with my animals because I don't like risking anything. So when it comes to reptiles with other reptiles, a lot of times this happens with cohabitation. And I actually have made these mistakes myself before. Um, I actually got Dude, my bearded dragon, and initially, like, I didn't know very much about reptiles. I was still learning. I was very new to everything. And I thought, okay, well, you know what? My bearded dragon seems lonely, so I'm going to get him a friend. Just completely anthropomorphizing the situation, and it was a horrible mistake because I got him his other friend, and again, they were just very aggressive with one another because that's how bearded dragons are. They're very territorial. They want their own space. No animal wants to compete for a food source or for hides or basking areas because these are solitary animals. They do not have feelings and emotions of being lonely and sad. They're just looking for their food and their hides and their basking places so they can have their natural behaviors and rely on instincts. So when it comes to cohabitation, I just completely am against it. There are some cases where it can be okay temporarily if you are breeding, but for the most part, it is best just to keep your animals separated. They're gonna be way less prone to stress that way and there's not gonna be a risk for aggression and fighting over territory or food or anything. So it's just a safer route to go. And one other thing that I forgot to add is that in the wild, some animals will actually get along in groups, such as tokays. Tokay geckos actually stay as a family unit. There are some skinks that do that. There are some alligators who take care of their young. Same with snakes. Um, again, that's not something that a lot of people, again, viewing those situations would think that that is like a loving family unit, such as like how human beings are. However, that's more for survival, just to make sure that their young survive in the wild. That way their numbers can keep going and the circle of life will continue to grow. So because we see those family units in the wild, we may think that again, that's like a loving family unit. They love each other, they want to be together. Um, and again, that's anthropomorphizing the situation and those animals are actually with their young and trying to make sure that they survive in the wild and it really doesn't have anything to do with feelings or emotions as humans would think because we are humans and we have those feelings and emotions but those animals are strictly just trying to survive. And that doesn't mean that in captivity it's going to be the same situation and you should keep a family unit together because it's just different when it comes to a matter of space and territory and hiding places again and you don't want them to have to compete because again some people will think they can keep a toke group together and a lot of the times in captivity, the adults will actually eat their young because they see them as a food source in captivity. So it's just something to be mindful of because not everything in the wild can be replicated in captivity. So I hope that this video didn't just make you guys think that your animals hate you and want nothing to do with you because obviously they can tolerate human interaction very well. They can live great lives in captivity, at least I believe. And again, I do want to mention, like, I am guilty of anthropomorphism all the time. Like, it's so hard to do that when you're keeping reptiles because you're going to put those human-like qualities on your animals. But at the end of the day, it is very important to understand that they are animals relying on instincts. And it's very important to understand how you interact with them and that they do not have these feelings that we may think that they have, even though it may be fun to think those things when we're keeping them. But when it comes down to it for their own safety and well-being it's very important to realize that these animals do not have those feelings so again i don't mean to say that your animals don't love you and they hate you or anything it's just very important to understand 
how we put our feelings onto our animals and what they really need at the end of the day just to keep them safe and thriving in captivity because they are our responsibility in the end. So I hope that this video was helpful. Please leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on this topic and I will see you guys in the next video.